some, uh, there, it's, uh, Aperture MX, I think, I'll leave a link in the description, and it'll be an affiliate link, so I'll get money if you buy one, so buy one, um, but they're just, like, these really cool little credit card style lights, kind of like this, but not this, this is, like, the cheaper version, it's the Amaran AL M9, also from Aperture, uh, this one's just a bicolor one. Or I don't even think it's a bicolor. I think it's just daylight. Um, but it has a little magnet strip on it. And then you can put a gel in there so you can make it whatever, whatever color you want, assuming you had the gel for it. So you could do like a blue, I guess. And I think these are, these are a, a little older, so you could probably get them cheaper. But those MC lights are like 90 bucks, so that's a super good deal. Um, I got four of them back there, which is, I mean, obviously more than most people would have, but I do this for a living. Um, so I have four of them for work and I bring them in for YouTube. So that, you know, that's that. Anyway, 90 seconds later, let's get to the point of today's video. So today, um, I've been so having a hard time lately with a lot of things. You watched the last couple of videos, you know, I talk a little bit about that. My blood sugar has been super high lately and I just feel like things aren't going kind of the way I want them to. Um, and then I remembered something today um, from James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. And I don't really remember the exact phrasing of it because it's, you know, it's a book, it's longer, and I don't, I didn't mark the pages, you know, because uh, I listened on Audible. So there's a lot of like little bookmarks on Audible. I really don't know how to go back and like get anything useful out of that other than like, I, I could look in the, the chapters in Audible and be like, oh, there's like 20 bookmark flags. Let me just go get a hard copy of the book and just read that chapter and, and do a better job making notes. Um, which I think if I was ever going to do like book reports, uh, would kind of be the way I'd do it. I'd listen on Audible, make bookmarks at the relevant things, and then uh, buy a hard copy of the book for you know, making videos or whatever. Uh, today we're drinking Celsius orange. Orange is like one of the only good flavors. A lot of the other flavors are not good. Watermelon is the worst. Don't get watermelon. The grape one's okay. Uh, but the orange one's the best one. Anyway, oh, it's a quick pitch for Celsius. Celsius, if you're listening, please give me free ones. Uh, this is allegedly like the only healthy energy drink, uh, at least according to my little brother who's a personal trainer and went to college for that stuff. Uh, so I'm drinking it because uh, he tells me everything else is literal poison is what he tells me. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'll drink this. And uh, they're pretty good. I don't feel gross when I drink them. So that's my pitch for beverage pitch for the day. And uh, anyway, let's get on with the video. <laughs> for, now four minutes later. Uh, so the idea that came from James Clear's book is... Um, I don't know what I want to call it. I don't know what he calls it, but it's it's kind of like identity questions. So in his book, he talks about forming habits and the power of forming habits. Um, but one important kind of carrot stick sort of motivator is, is setting an identity, saying, having declarative statements, I am the type of person that pop, pop, pop. So if you think about like, you know, you want to work out more, you're like, I'm the type of person, you know, I'm, I'm a healthy person, or, you know, I'm a gym nut, you know, maybe you don't go zero to 60 like that, but um, then you just reframe a lot of your decisions through the lens of your declarative statement, so, <clears throat> excuse me, so uh, somebody asked about uh, advice for making an ASMR channel uh, tonight or yesterday or wh whenever it was in the comments. I never know when they come. There's a timestamp, but you know, it's like I see them whenever. <laughs> um, and it's like, okay, well, if you, you know, like think about at that lens, like I am a, a YouTuber, I am a content creator, I am an ASMR artist or whatever people call uh, this. <laughs> jazz hands, that's what they call it, um, and, and you, <clears throat> I mean, I've got like a frog, um, and you run things through that lens, and so think about like, I, I am, I'm the type of person. 
person who makes ASMR content for the internet. And it's like, okay, well, what kind of habits would that person do? Would they make a video, you know, every week? Would they watch other ASMR videos to get ideas um, that they rip off and do better or worse or whatever? Um, do they make stupid vlogs that sometimes people watch to fall asleep to? <laughs> um, so you think about it like that. So, you know, like, I, for me, like, the declarative statement today that I made was like, I'm a person who has their blood sugar under control. Um, and that kind of worked today. Because uh, for lunch, I had a salad. It was like a, kind of a build your own salad station. And I'll be honest, it was like the first time I've really like built a salad. So I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> Just throwing shit in there. Um, and it was okay. You know, it, it, it was a good, good lunch. It felt good. Um, of course, and then I get home. Check my blood sugar. I'm like, okay, I've been good. I fasted, you know, not super long. I think it was only like 13 hours, which isn't, that's like the minimum fast window is 13 hours. Um, and um, I ate a low carb breakfast. I just had a sandwich with low carb bread. Uh, so that's like 20 grams the most of carbs. And then I had the salad, which, you know, was just lettuce, chicken, bacon, uh, egg, tomatoes not like a lot of tomatoes just like a couple tomatoes there really wasn't a lot of veggies you could throw in um and then ranch dressing which isn't super high in carbs uh but i also don't really have a concept for how much i'm putting on there uh so that might have been you know there's there's no way it was more than like 20 grams of carbs because everything else like you the tomatoes can be a little carby but vegetable fruit uh sugar hits it's the blood sugar a little different but anyway to get to the point i you know i asked you know, the question of like we're at lunch we're in a cafeteria at a uh at a college we're doing some films filming at a college and i'm like okay what would somebody who has their diabetes under control what would they eat and it's like i got a salad and i got an unsweetened tea that had zero everything um and I was like, okay, that's lunch. You know, there's cookies there. And I wanted those fucking cookies so badly. They had sushi. I fucking love sushi. They had fucking burgers and sweet potato fries. And you better believe I love me some motherfucking sweet potato fries. But I was like, no. Do, you know, do the Zen thing and be like, what would look at the lens? Like, okay, the thing you want to control is your blood sugar. If, if it was under control, what would your diet look like? You know, think about that. Like... If I was a successful ASMR maker person, what would my day look like? What would my upload schedule look like? What would the videos I create look like? Probably not that one, but you get the idea, you know? Of course, the TLDR is that this is a long-term process because I got home, checked my blood sugar, and it was still like 2.30, and I was like, fuck this, and I was so angry uh, and depressed and sad, and it was a bad time. And uh, then I made some, uh, I call them mini pizzas. They, I take the uh, carb, so Mission Tortillas has like a, a carb, a balanced tortilla that has six grams of net carbs, which as an aside, the whole net carb thing is basically, you take the number of carbs, you subtract fiber, and there's a couple other things you can like pull out of the carb number. And technically the net carbs is how your blood sugar should be affected. But uh, nobody told my blood that because it still fucking goes up. Um, anyway, I, I made two of them and they were big fat. So it's like better, realistically, even if you took all the carbs in the two tortillas, it's only like 60 grams of carbs. And the tomato sauce probably added another like 10, so that's 70 grams of carbs. Uh, and it's just cheese and meat on top of it after that. Um, and I had that and then I had a Klondike bar with no sugar added. Uh, so that's probably like 90 grams of carbs. Um, and then, you know, I tested my blood sugar after, two hours after that. And it was like 300 something. And I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> it's frustrating. And so it's just, it's a long-term thing. You know, you, you can't just do, th when you think about like, I want to be, th you know, not even the best. I want to be pretty good at why. People that are pretty good at why don't just do this shit for one meal or one day. And so you're going to have some setbacks and it's going to take time to get where you want to get.
but if you just kind of put things through those lenses of like what would a person who is successful at this what would you know you, you think about like where do I want to be and you know for me that's like I want my fucking blood sugar under control like that's the main thing because then if my if I can get that under control that fixes a lot of downstream problems that I keep having apparently um and then to move on to the next thing of like okay let's how do, so how do I do that and like what would it look like it'd be like okay working out so I've got the kettlebells back out now that my back is kind of healed I guess because I did like 200 kettlebell swings yesterday I didn't do like I did only 20 today just because I'm sore and I'm tired and like you can't you can't do 200 kettlebell swings every day you have to build up to that like you can't just be like okay well I'm gonna fucking David Goggins this shit if you're not familiar with David Goggins that guy's fucking crazy he uh he lost 100 pounds in three months so he could join like the Navy SEALs and then he's got a book called Can't Hurt Me it's a really motivating book and also slightly a cautionary tale of like maybe maybe there's a middle ground between just going all out at something and then like spending too much time researching maybe you can like research for a little bit you know and uh, that does remind me of another thing here's another little sprinkle of good tips uh it was a system i don't remember whose system it was but the system was watch one do one teach one um in that sort of a cyclical pattern so you'd watch somebody do the thing you want to do you would do the thing yourself and then you would show somebody how you did it and so you kind of create those loops of learning uh to get kind of where you want to go so that's, I that was kind of a neat idea which also is reminiscent of ken shamrock who is a uh mma fighter or wrestler uh ryan holiday talks about this in his book um i think it's ego is the enemy uh, but his system is to have three sparring partners, somebody that's better than him, somebody that's worse than him, and somebody that's at his level. So someone that's better than him he can learn from, someone that's worse than him he can teach and remind himself of the basics. And then someone at his level is just a good, kind of even good challenge to spar against. So that's kind of a neat idea too. It's a little harder to apply that to creative situations, but I mean, you could, in the sense that you could think that like okay if you want to do graphic design like you should be trying to recreate um masterpieces you know you can think about that like a lot of people will go to museums and sketch them you should also be doing sketches of your own and then obviously just the, the day-to-day work that you would do as an artist so you know that's an idea for that and you could think you know you apply that to what we were talking about earlier with the identities of like what would a successful artist do and you could go back and you could look at a lot of these famous artists and kind of what their day was like and their sketchbooks you know are often open to the public and so you could be like these guys made a lot of fucking sketches like if you're not you know spending your time sketching and it's that it's it's kind of back to the chicken and the egg thing and you're like okay well i don't have time and i'm tired and it's like, yeah, motherfucker, those guys didn't have time either, but they found time. And even if you're just doing the smallest amount of the thing, you know, think about that of like the people, Wayne Gretzky, you know, Michael Jordan, like they might not have worked out every day, but they probably didn't go more than two days without fucking touching a hockey stick or picking up a basketball, even if they're just, you know, clapping a couple clappers or, or shooting a couple free throws like they were still doing it most days you know so y- you think about that and just like if you just don't have any zero days it adds up and over time like before you know it like think if you just did i don't know how many sketches you know artists do um and my girlfriend you know she's doing graphic design and it's like sometimes she like gets kind of in a good flow of like doing doodles, but like realistically she probably only doodles, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 things a year, something, you know, like that. And then she maybe makes five to 10 kind of finished pieces. And so it's like, okay, well think about if you just did a doodle every day and it, even if you just, you just took five minutes and you're like, I'm gonna just fucking pull out the five minutes while I'm taking a shit and you could do this on the clock, you know, 
know, you tell your boss to go take a shit and you go fucking sketch in the fucking, you know, shitter. And at the end of the year, you know, even if you're only talking working days, that's still two, three hundred sketches. You're still doubling, tripling, quadrupling your output pretty fast there. Um, and it's like, think, you know, if you put 4x the effort, um, how much faster would you get better at the thing? I mean, obviously, there's still an idea of dedicated practice. You can't just, like, shit out crappy doodles and expect to get better. Um, you have to actually kind of try and focus and think of things that you can improve. Like, I improved the lighting today, and, like, okay, that's kind of cool. I like that. That makes this look a lot better just looking at the viewfinder. Uh, I don't know if it looks better on the screen yet. I'll probably get into the editor and be like, wow, that looks like shit. I hate this. <laughs> nah, that won't happen. I know it kind of looks good. Um, something about the blue just offsets the skin tone pretty well. I need to shave. Just strange thoughts. Strange thoughts with the ESM artists. But yeah, so that's kind of a thing I was thinking about today, and it's just like, okay, you know, what, what are my lenses to see things through? And it's like, okay, well, I want to have my blood sugar under control. I want to be good at hockey, you know, or better at hockey at least. I want to score a fucking goal this season. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, I want to be in better shape. That kind of goes back to the diabetes thing. Um, and the hockey thing, so those are the three lenses right there. You, you're really fucking zooming in on, like, what's your fucking diet like, ass face, because you can't eat shitty and expect to go get on the ice and be quick. You know, it, it reminds me of, there's, like, a uh, floating out there on the internet. It's, like, from the 90s. It's, like, a nutrition guide for hockey players, and it's, like, some of the worst fucking advice. It's, like, before you play a game, like, eat a box of mac and cheese. <laughs> Sports science has come a long way in 30 years. Oh, it feels weird to say that. 30 years. Ugh. Anyway, I'm getting into that stage of my life where I'm like, I'm so old. Oh, I'm so old. But I have a young puppy dog face because I never go outside. I don't have fun. I don't do drugs. Except for sometimes. But not usually. Um. <laughs> anyway. Um, very infrequent. I don't drink or smoke or have fun. Uh, often. I don't really go outside. I get my vitamin D from supplements. What's up? Uh, by the way, are you taking your vitamin D? There's been a lot of studies that say if you are vitamin D deficient, COVID will hit you worse. So get, get your vitamin D pills in, kids. Um, they're cheap. They cost like a dollar for like a million of them. Anyway, or just go outside. Fuck, whatever. Go stand outside for 10 minutes a day. You'll be good. I was going somewhere with all that. Oh, yeah, the lenses I'm looking through, you know, so like have the blood sugar, have the diabetes under control, and work to kind of put that into remission, which that's all other spaghetti worm can. Uh, get on, get better at hockey, get fucking back to where I would get peak, get, get to the peak of my hockey performance that would push my abilities, get, you know, get good scrub. Uh, get in good shape, get healthy, um, and then also kind of, I really want to kind of make a push into the creator stuff this year, you know, I kind of have these ebbs and flows of like pushing hard, and it's just like I see how things are going in the freelance world, and I also see, you know, I'm kind of bearing up this stuff, like if I keep having health problems, it's really hard to freelance, which is where I make most of my money, so if I can make more money from YouTube, if I can make more money, I'm gonna make a fucking course, because apparently that's how you make all your money with fucking content. <laughs> you make a dumb fucking course and you sell it to people. You make a course about selling courses and that's how you get rich. Uh, or you write a book about writing books about getting rich. And then yeah, that's how you get rich. Uh, that seems to be the, the, the popular way to do it. Uh, but no, I like, I like doing this, it's fun. It's different, and most importantly, I don't have to answer to clients. And if I think something sucks, I just delete it. And then you don't get a video that day, because I'm like, that's that was shitty, that was stupid, no one wants to hear that. Um, more often than not, I just stop the camera and go again. Because uh, I ain't making cuts on these bitches, this is all raw. Because I think, I feel like length is kind of important for ASMR, but then... I 
again, I was telling someone today, they asked for tips on how to make an ASMR channel, and I was like, bro, I don't fucking know, I've made 500 videos, and like, this is, this is the best, this is as good as it because it's just like, yeah, I, some of my most popular videos are like a minute long, and I got like 30,000 views, and then I got bitches that are like an hour long, and they have like 200 views, and then I've got stuff that I shot with like my iPhone, and you know, like, 10,000 views, and then I got shit I shot with like $10,000 set up and fancy fucking lights, and this will get like 70 views. Like, there's no rhyme or reason to, to a lot of it, it feels like. Um, but yeah, that's just. Just TV, I heard the TV, it was like a weird noise. Anyway, um, yeah, so to recap, um, I talked about a lot of shit. I got spaghetti rambly. I got new lights. That door being half a jar, like, bothers me. I'm gonna have to shut that or leave it all the way open, because I have a jar. I don't like that. Uh, which, that might just be a, a, my thing. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, so set up some lenses for yourself to run your decisions through, and I think you'll have a lot easier time making decisions, creating habits, and sticking with them. That's, yeah, and if you want more on that, fuck James Clear's Atomic Habits is a fucking amazing book, and it will change your life for the better. I, you, there's no way you could read that book and not come away with at least, like, two fucking things that will totally radically change your life for the better and will not be hard to implement. I promise you that. Uh, I can't, I can't recommend that book enough. I'll drop an affiliate link down below if you want to go buy it and give me that affiliate money so I can buy dumb shit I don't need on Amazon. Anyway, uh, that's all I got today. I hope you're doing well. And if not, well, I hope that turns around for you real soon. And if not, fucking set up a lens and start running some decisions through it and see how uh, that makes your life go for the next week or two. And if shit doesn't get better for you, let me know. Drop up and drop a comment. I need more comments so I can fucking chit chat. Because I can't just make videos and be like, are people watching this? I don't know. Some of you leave comments and I appreciate the fuck out of you. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, I slapped my knee. That's the Midwestern sign for let's wrap it up and get the fuck out of here. Um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.